This is a short story about a man and a woman and their desire to do God's will. Who am I? That's me, their favorite oldest son. I'm going to try to tell this story, but I was quite young through much of it, so if I get something wrong, back off, because I wasn't there. Anyways, the man who we'll call Terry, because that's his name, graduated from the Naval Academy. The woman, who we'll call Lynn, because she also enjoys being called by her name, met Terry at the Naval Academy while attending a Baptist student meeting. They hit it off, got married, had two beautiful kids, and also another one. After finishing his time at the Navy, they both decided to attend Southeastern Seminary together. While in seminary, Terry pastored his first church called Oak Ridge Baptist Church. See the sign? That's the church right there. Juggling their two precious children and the other one, they eventually graduated from seminary in 1978. From there, Terry got a job as a pastor of Ocean City Baptist Chapel. That's where they moved to in the winter of 1978. A newspaper heralded their achievement of seminary degrees in which Lynn was quoted saying that she feels she has a role of being a supportive ministry. LOL. <laughs> that lasted a few years until she was offered a job as resort minister by the Home Mission Board. The ministry took off into full swing almost immediately. With the recruitment of missionaries and mission teams, Lynn Davis set her eyes to the local campgrounds and began surf and sand clubs. Her mission was to reach people during their time of rest and offer a fun activity for their children to go to in the mornings. This activity was also known by the parents of the campground as Don't Bother Me, Get Out of the Camper and Find Something Else to Do. Each year, literally thousands of children and their parents heard the good news of Jesus at these surf and sand clubs. They played games, made friendships, ate cookies at 9.30 in the morning. What more could a kid want? It seemed that each year Lynn kept adding more and more campgrounds. Mission teams came from all over the east to help with the ministries. The odd thing was, even after a week of hard, intense work, a lot of them would come back. The ministry was not just limited to the campgrounds. Each year more and more ministries were added. Many of the youth groups would perform puppet shows on the beach. Some would perform concerts on the boardwalk showmobile. Soon, a ministry to the lifeguards began. From giving away frisbees to inviting people to play beach volleyball, Lynn's goal was to meet people where they were and bring Jesus to them. I honestly couldn't even begin to count the number of ministries that Lynn started, but here is a quick collage of a few that you may have forgotten. As her favorite oldest son, I watched my mom, like every kid does. And while doing so, I learned a lot about God, perseverance, and an unrelenting pursuit to share the gospel. Each summer when the missionaries would arrive, I remember thinking that my summer family was finally home, and I developed deep relationships that changed who I am today. I learned that for every thousand kids that came through the ministries, you might only reach just one. But that was all my mom needed to carry on. I learned that clowns really aren't that scary. I also learned that things don't just happen. Doing God's work takes a lot of effort and behind the scenes thankless duties. I learned that a husband and a wife working together in pursuit of God's will can change the world around them. I learned that the other one actually was watching too. And he has a pretty amazing ministry going on himself. Thank you, Mom, for the example you were to so many people. Thank you for the way you brought us alongside and gave us opportunities to serve, even at a young age. Thank you for showing us the hope of eternity through grace. While my mom will no longer hold the title of resort minister, there's no doubt in my mind that her ministry is far from over and the legacy of her work will continue for generations to come.